Good evening and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Today is February 7th, 2012. We're already into the second month of 2012. I can't believe it. Got a big show coming up. Alex is going to interview with Mark Morano. So Alex will be doing half the show and I'll be doing this part right here. And uh, they're going to be talking about a host of things. Mark was recently accused of being a Taliban agent or something of that sort by other uh, climate conspiracy people. We're going to be talking about the TSA, a bunch of Ron Paul voting shenanigans going on in Nevada. But first, it's our first news, of course, is, uh, well, you know, Department of Homeland Security. Anybody who pays cash for anything could be a terrorist. Here's our headline, FBI, paying cash for a cup of coffee, a potential indicator of terrorist activity. And this is from Paul Joseph Watson. And they put out a bunch of flyers and they want people to be looking out for any type of mundane activity. And here's the quote. As we documented on numerous occasions, the federal government routinely characterizes mundane behavior as extremist activity or a potential indicator of terrorist intent. As part of its See Something, Say Something campaign, the DHS educates the public that generic activities performed by millions of people every day, including using a video camera, talking to police officers, wearing hoodies, driving vans, well, that's me, writing on a piece of paper, <laughs> that's me too, using a cell phone, that's me, and uh, are potential signs of terrorist activity. So I'm on three of those lists. Let's see what else they have. In fact, if you go to the article, you can see, uh, you can download a zip file of all the potential terrorist activities. One, of course, which is an internet cafe, but let's go to the first one. Construction sites, financial institutions, general aviation airports, martial arts and paintball activities, military surplus stores, peroxide-based explosives, bulk fuel distributors, electronic stores, Hotels and motels, there's internet cafe, buying your coffee, you're a terrorist. Rental cars, <clears throat> farm supply stores, large retail and home improvement stores, shopping malls and entertainment facilities, rental properties, storage facilities, uh-oh, here we go, here's the big one, here's so you know you're a terrorist, tattoo shops. Uh, wholesale distributors of beauty and drug, Airport service providers, dive and boat shops, hobby shops, mass transportation, rental trucks. People, if you breathe air or drink water, you might be a terrorist, according to the FBI. So they're going to have all these agents out there looking at everything you do, questioning you, making little snide remarks of, oh, why are you paying with cash and stuff like that? And it's just going to keep going and going and going. Please go get the article, get the, get the documents, print them out, read them for yourself. It's ridiculous. You're the terrorist out there. It's not Al Qaeda. It's not Osama bin Laden with a bomb jacket. They're looking at you. And if you're in the military, they're definitely looking at you. Moving on. Senate passes bill allowing airports to evict TSA. Yay! Looks like a victory for us. The Senate has passed legislation that includes a provision allowing airports to replace TSA with private security, opening the door for the widely loathed federal agency to be marginalized from aviation security altogether. Following the massive nationwide black backlash against TSA's invasive groping policies and its use of radiation-firing naked body scanners linked by many prestigious health bodies to cancer, an increasing number of airports have attempted to take responsibility for their own screening procedures by replacing TSA workers with privately hired personnel, and that's the way it should be. It should be free market because the thing with the TSA is you're not allowed to complain about what they do because if you do, you're either fined or you miss your flight or you're put on a no-fly list. So by doing it private, privately, at least you have the ability to complain to somebody and those complaints will be heard because those people actually care because they're getting paid for the job they do. It's not like with the TSA, they already have your money, so they don't care if you complain. One more TSA story. Mike Adams came out with this amazing uh, commercial. They, I guess they dug it up somewhere on the internet that the TSA is out there um, looking for, for pot-bellied pedophiles to join their ranks, and uh, let's just go to the clip. Help wanted. 
The TSA needs your help to protect America's national security. As a lightly trained TSA officer, you'll get a plastic badge. Oh yeah, you rock. But that's not all. No education needed. No IQ too low. Not even yours. And as a federal TSA officer, you get to harass everyone around you, just like you did in high school. Yo, check this out. You also get to feel some genitals. No, not your own. So if you want your plastic badge, there's a, there's a job out there waiting for you, and they're hiring. So go check out the article at Natural News. TSA, help wanted comedy animation video causes ROFL pandemic across the internet, C warned CDC. It's a satire piece, guys, but check it out. Pass it on to your friends, and <laughs> it's just plain funny. We're going to play the whole thing tomorrow night. Mike Adams will actually be hosting. He's going to give you the whole scoop behind the scenes, why they did it, how they did it, uh, the people involved in it, whatnot. So that'll be tomorrow. We'll play the whole thing for you. Moving on. Ron Paul military donations, twice those of his GOP rivals and Obama combined. Oh, my goodness. Not a surprise because we've reported on this before in the third quarter, in the second quarter, back in 2008. And uh, from Business Wire, a veteran of the Cold War era, Paul raised more than $150,000 from active military in the fourth quarter. This comes after congressmen outraised all GOP candidates, including all GOPers combined, and President Obama. That was in the second and third quarters of last year. And, uh, and it also mentions that he did it in 2008. So what does that tell you? The people that are fighting your wars don't want to be fighting them if it's for the wrong reasons. They really don't want to be out there killing brown people and dirt farmers in other parts of the world. What they want to be doing is defending America from true enemies, foreign and domestic, which are a lot of the giant banks here in the United States. Moving on to Nevada. Paul Camp cries fraud over Nevada caucus results. And this is from TheExaminer.com. And um, this kind of goes with our whole saying of the, the media telling you Ron Paul can't win. And this is very interesting. It goes through a timetable. Let's go to the first quote, which takes place at 1.30 a.m. CNN and precinct captain revealed the results of the second count. This time, Ron Paul's count was roughly 183, 58% of the precinct's overall vote, to Mitt Romney's 45, New Gingrich's 20, and Santorum's 8. These are votes. <clears throat> if the media wasn't blacking out the coverage now, we could actually share these actual numbers with our readers. Paul supporters are ecstatic knowing that they won and overwhelmingly in a precinct of Jewish and extremely Christian voters, two of Paul's r worst demographics. In fact, CNN interest polls showed that Ron Paul won overwhelmingly among voters who weren't religious. Let's move on to 135. Your Arthur and thousands of others of Ron Paul supporters are still waiting to be able to do a simple math deduction that if Ron Paul won 58% of the vote in Clark County, and that was representative of his performance countywide, he should have won Nevada easily. If uh, he won 58% of the vote with 53% outstanding in that county compared to Mitt Romney's 47, so it should have been a Ron Paul win, right? Well, at 145, CNN blacks out election coverage, shutting down the studio without so much as a word or explanation or warning, switching to human interest stories with an afternoon anchor for 10 minutes. The network shut all live coverage completely, opting instead to rebroadcast the entire night's early evening coverage where they were reporting on a Romney victory with merely 3% of the vote. So we have a clip. Somebody uh, shot this off YouTube, and this is basically the results of that particular caucus, which, of course, is not indicative of the rest of Nevada because those people completely didn't vote the way these people did. Here's the results. Be out. Uh, but here's what happened, Don. Here's the final count. 100, uh, 183 for Ron Paul, 61 for Mitt Romney, 57 for Newt Gingrich, and 16 for Rick Santorum. Behind me right now, these are Republican Party officials from Clark County. You can see the votes are right over there, right above those boxes. They're going to take them downtown to the party HQ, and they're going to be added to the county totals, and then, of course, they'll be added to the total totals for the state. So he's got an overwhelming win in this one precinct where he wasn't even supposed to be doing that good with Jewish and Catholic voters. Yet the rest of Nevada magically votes for Mitt Romney. So old Mittens wins. And here's another interesting thing we found on a Facebook post. We'll go to this graph. And it shows the percentages of Ron Paul from 2008 to 2012. 
He's got a 120% increase in Iowa, a 210% increase in New Hampshire, a 385% increase in South Carolina, an 86% increase in Florida. Oh, in Nevada, only a 1.4% increase. And this is a place where if you remember back in 2008, they actually shut down the primary because there were so many Ron Paul supporters there and they were wanting to vote Ron Paul in. They were wanting to give him the delegates, even though I think technically Mittens won the caucus, but Ron Paul had his people in. They went through the process and then it gets to the end and the Republican, the Republican establishment just shut it down. I think we have an article here over on the big screen. So here we are back in 2008. Ron Paul backers outmaneuver Nevada GOP establishment. Outmaneuvered by raucous G, uh, Ron Paul supporters, Nevada Republican Party leaders shut down their weekend state convention. And so then they went ahead and, and what they did was have it in a secret area and then gave it the vote to Mittens Romney. So that's the kind of stuff that's going to keep happening to Ron Paul over and over again as we go through. Now they're kind of predicting that Santorum is going to somehow win in Minnesota. Yeah, right. If you believe that. I got a bridge to nowhere in Alaska to sell you. Moving on to this weird, weird story out of Virginia. Judge sets trial date in Loughton School tardiness. And this has to do with Amy and Mark Denacor. They have to go to a full-blown trial to defend themselves um, for their daughter who's been late to school too often. This is elementary school. The Decores are each charged with Three class three misdemeanors, each of which carries a maximum $500 fine. Their three children, ages six, seven, and nine, have been late to school almost 30 times since September. Most of their tardies were three minutes or less. Well, I mean, what does that tell you? You can't have a robotic um, generation of people that are yes men and yes women who are going to pull the line for these giant corporations if they're three minutes late from school. That might, you might have to. Waste a bunch of people's time and money bringing them to trial, which is what they're doing here. We're actually trying to get Mark on the show today, and we think we're going to convince him. If you know Mark out there, tell him we're on his side. We want him on the show. It says here they're charged under the state's compulsory education law, which says parents have to send their kids to school for the same number of days and hours per day as school is in session. Another statute clearly spells out how school systems must proceed in the case of chronic absences when there's no indication that the pupil's parent is aware and supports the pupil's absence. Of course, none of it specifies tardiness. That's just another little glitch that they want to use to try to control people's lives. And it's disgusting. So, moving on. Last night, I uh, actually ran across this book, and it made me think of this book. Back in the late 90s, I think it was like 97 or 98, I went to this used bookstore uh, back in Murraysville, Pennsylvania, where I used to live. And I went upstairs, and I was looking around, I wanted to find some good books to read. I was sick and tired of reading the garbage they were telling me to read in high school, and I just started college. And I ran into, I went upstairs, and I found the conspiracy government section. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I started thumbing around, and these two books were sitting right next to each other. Grab the first one, None Dare Call It Conspiracy. Short book, I'm gonna read it. The next one, Who Runs Congress? I was already pretty aware in terms of uh, geopolitically that everything's been fixed, everything's a sham. So I wanna just go over these two books with you and I encourage you to read them. They're great books, even though they were both written in the 70s, early 70s, they're great primers and you will find many events in these books that kinda relate to what's going on today. So let's go to None Dare Call It Conspiracy. They've got a lot of great uh, graphics and pictures in there that kind of explain the kind of overall global hierarchy. It goes into a little chart of, of uh, communism versus fascism, shows how the middle class are getting pressure from above and below, shows a whole chart of the world government and the companies involved, shows members of the CFR including Eisenhower and the Kennedys and Kissinger and Nixon. Then we go to Paul Warburg who was the main guy for the Federal Reserve into bankrolling the Bolshevik Revolution. I bet you didn't know that. We get put Trotsky in power, the Federal Reserve System did. And then there's a little chart on that about the people who are contributing money, they're also helping out Hitler. It's a big scam. And this book goes into it. Towards the end, there's a really great section called the 14 Signposts to Slavery. And I would like to read all 14 of these real quick. Restrictions on taking money out of the country and establishment or retention of a foreign bank account by an American citizen. 
abolition of private ownership of handguns, detention of individuals without judicial process, can someone say NDAA, requirements that private financial transactions be keyed to social security numbers or other government identification so that government records of these transactions can be kept and fed into a computer, use of compulsory education laws to forbid attendance at presently existing private schools. Let's go to the next one. Compulsory non-military service. Those are your brown shirts. Or I guess in Obama's case, it's the red shirts. Compulsory psychological treatment for non-government workers are public school children. Official declaration that anti-communist organizations are subversive and subsequent legal action taken to suppress them. Limiting the number of people allowed to meet in a private home. We've seen that, where people aren't allowed to have uh, little prayer meetings. And I think that happened in Colorado a few years ago. Any significant change in passport regulations to make passports more difficult to obtain? It now takes you over three months to get a passport. Wage and price controls, essentially in a non-wartime situation. Any kind of compulsory registration with the government of where individuals are going to work. And the last two, any attempt to restrict the freedom of movement within the United States. And 14, any major attempt, any attempt to make a new law a new major law by executive decree. How many laws have we seen by executive order? There you go. Great book, None Dare Call a Conspiracy. The next one, Who Runs Congress? And this is by the Ralph Nader Congress Project. It's not officially by Nader, but it's by his uh, kind of group. And I just kind of want to read you a few quotes of these book. Um, page 22. It used to be that corporations helped their candidates in return for an even larger slice of the government's pie. Nowadays, many big businesses find they already have as much as they can decorously eat. Their main concern is to guarantee against shrinkage. That was on page 22. The next one on page 48. The House in some ways isn't very representative. There's almost never anyone here under 30, and of course there are only nine blacks, this was in 1969, when proportionately there should be about 50. There's a disproportionate representation, even more skewed for women and blue collar workers. So unless you're a millionaire, you're not getting in. Page 55, it would be risky, and this is talking about committees and how they put freshmen, or they don't put freshmen in the heads of committees, they kind of keep them off so they can see how they work. Here's the quote, it would be too risky to put on a person whose views in nature, the leadership has no opportunity to assess. That's what the FBI agents like to do. They like to assess you. A careful screening ensures that nonconformists do not slip through. So they want to make sure that the right guys are in there to keep the policies going as they are. Moving on to page 91. It's about liberals. The average liberal thinks up what he or she wants to do and then runs off to somebody else to ask. What procedural step do I take in order to do this? Consequently, liberals rarely get anything significantly accomplished. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Here's an interesting quote from page 94. In the last two decades, roughly 80% of the major laws passed have started in the executive branch. Okay? That's not the representatives writing the laws. That's the president writing stuff with, through executive order which is pretty much like a dictatorship, and this is back in the 70s. Here's a very interesting quote about lobbyists. A 1913 law, the Executive Anti-Lobbying Act, says that no funds may be used to influence in any man manner a member of Congress to favor or oppose by vote or otherwise any legislation or appropriation by Congress. The only exception is that executive agents may communicate with members of Congress on request through the proper channels. So by creating this little loophole, we have the problems that we have now. So I would encourage you, check out these two books. They woke me up way back in the 90s, if you can remember that far, and they can do the same for you. Moving on to the, our Mother Earth. Uh, and this is out of Climate Depot. They put together a compilation of a bunch of uh, UN's uh, sustainable development efforts. And the article is, read all about it, Climate Depot's roundup of UN's sustainable development efforts. UN officially throws global warming under the bus. UN now says case for saving species more powerful than climate change. And there's a whole bunch of articles there. 
Alex is going to be up with Mark Morano talking about this. One of the articles in there in particular, which was interesting, was CO2 causes contempt for childhood, a climate well worthy of our alarm. When children less than six years old are seen as instruments for the achievement of sustainable society, and that we must make them understand deeply and even shock them out of their unawareness, then something is seriously amiss. Somebody somewhere is up to something we should resist. And that's a quote from a UNESCO report. And it was recently reported on by Donna uh, Laframbosi. Very interesting article. Check it out. It's got a lot of interesting information how they're trying to brainwash the kids into thinking they're bad. Our final article of the day is from the San Francisco Gate, and it has to do with red light cameras. Um, you may recall a couple years ago, they actually beat these in Phoenix, Arizona. A lot of the Freedoms Phoenix people, uh, 4409, those guys, if you can check them out on YouTube, they made a lot of good videos going against this. But here we go in San Francisco. Anyone in California snap violating a red light pays a fine of $480. And according to traffic, a traffic watch site, thenewspaper.com, no other jurisdiction anywhere has that high of a tab. The second highest fine in the United States is 250, and usually it's more around 100. The legislature passed two bills in the past two years that would have reduced the fine or limited the camera's use, but both were vetoed. When he killed the most recent measure, Governor Jerry Brown said that matter should be left up to local jurisdictions. So basically, the local authorities are going to be able to loot you as much as they want with their uh, expensive red light cameras that usually more often than not are getting people for making right on reds or making a stop and then going through all kind of weird stuff there i don't know if i get one sent home from a camera i'm i'm not paying it there's no way there has to be somebody there witnessing the fact i have to sign something that says i'm going to appear in court so anyway moving on we're going to go to our quote of the day and then we'll be back after this break with Alex Jones talking with Mark Morano, and this is from, actually, Who Runs Congress, and it's the start of Chapter 5, and it's from Mark Twain. And the quote is, It could probably be shown by facts and figures that there is no distinctly American criminal class except Congress. That's by Mark Twain. That was way back in the day, probably in the late 1800s, that he wrote that quote. And uh, what can you say? They were criminals back then, they're criminals now, and they're criminals investigating criminals, so they're, therefore you're never going to see any charges filed, especially with stuff like Fast and Furious. That's why no one's gone to jail from the 2008 banking crisis, except for Bernie Madoff. He's the only guy. Well, with that, I would like to encourage you, if you're watching this on YouTube, to subscribe to Prison Planet TV and become a member. We have a great system now going. You have 15-day free trial, or you can actually give a gift to a friend for a card, and you get 44% off. It's Give the Gift of Truth, and that's only $44.95 for a full year. We're doing this five nights a week, and we're going to keep on doing it until we stop the globalists. That's all for me. Alex will be up next with Mark Morano. Thank you for watching. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Greetings, fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here announcing the first of many trips that I'm going to take across this wonderful United States that we live in. And we get so busy here at InfoWars.com, the nightly news, the daily radio show, the documentary films, and all the other things we're doing that I tend to never go out and give speeches anymore. And I've got a lot of ideas bubbling around in my head about the history of the New World Order, what makes them tick and how to defeat them. So I'm titling this key speech I'm going to give. It'll run around two hours long, Blueprint to Defeat the New World Order. And we're also going to have a surprise premiere of a short documentary film we've been working on at the event. First off, I'm going to be going to Dallas, Texas, Sunday, February 19th, 2012, to the historic Lakewood Theater. And the next Sunday, February 26th, I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida. You can find out more about the events and buy tickets at Infowars.com forward slash events. Now, unfortunately, every event I've ever had, we've had to turn people away. So get your tickets early at InfoWars.com forward slash events. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this world. And the craziest of all is this explosive awakening. I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand. I'll see you in Dallas and I'll see you in Orlando. InfoWars.com forward slash events.
sign of these evil 1770 six flags. Doesn't get any more out of control than that, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty un-American what we're doing here at InfoWars.com. I mean, not only are we promoting liberty, but we're selling 1776 flags. Now that is Al-Qaeda. That was amazing information uh, before we went to break that Rob Dew was covering. The fact that Ron Paul has gained in every single state since 2008, except in Nevada, and now the evidence of election fraud is just pouring in, just like Iowa. This is just, it just shows how systemic corruption and fraud is across the board in government, you name it. Now, speaking of fraud, Mark Moreno uh, is somebody who's been exposing fraud. And uh, he, of course, heads up the biggest uh, site in the world out there exposing the climate fraudsters, the gangsters that want to tax you for breathing and reduce CO2 that plants uh, live off of and that humans exhale. He's the former communications director for um, Senate Environment and Public Works Committee and senior aide to, of course, Senator James Inhofe. Uh, but if, if, if two or three years ago the whole Copenhagen thing going down in flames was a big deal, you know, the Death Star blowing up, this is uh, the end of the empire. I mean, the whole system is in free fall. Scientists are coming out. Governments are coming out saying man-made global warming's a fraud. Uh, current TV's in trouble. Al Gore's in trouble. I mean, across the board. But something's happening. Like Schwarzenegger said they do three years ago, they're focusing on counties, cities, and states. Here in Austin, they announced two weeks ago, 20 to 80 percent hikes on energy and they said for the earth we're going to charge you more just for the earth and private companies like ge that work for obama they get to shut down other power plants and then they charge you more for less so it's entering just la la land but even all the trendy liberals that like to flog themselves and get into you know being poor and how it's fun to live under austerity to the mega banks they're even getting angry so there's this weird dichotomy now, or this paradox, where they're in free fall, losing all credibility, but they're announcing their global government. Ban Ki moon two days ago said, I want world government. The New York Times came out and said, crazy people think there's a world government with the UN and Agenda 21, but then admitted Agenda 21's real out of the Earth Summit 20 years ago. And Mark Moreno, he's, he's going in a month or so uh, to the big uh, Rio summit. So just incredible what's happening. I don't want to say they're dead, but, but uh, their system's in trouble. But they're still power grabbing. They're still in charge everywhere. So the expert on this uh, joins us from climatedepot.com. Mark, thank you for spending time with us today. I know you're back on the radio tomorrow for a more extended interview, but uh, break down what's happening here. Well, let's see. Well, I'll start with Al Gore. We're at the point now where current TV, which never really got off the ground, Al Gore is begging, pleading, cajoling uh, Keith Oberman to stay around as the only vestige of a recognizable face that will affiliate themselves with his dying network. It is so bad. Al Gore did his 24-hour climate of reality, or I can't remember now if it was 48 or 72 hour, back in this, last fall. And the global warmest attacked Al Gore or ignored him. They were cringing. Al Gore is being cast out by the very movement that built him up. In another case in point, Al Gore traveled down to Antarctica with Richard Branson and some other global warmest scientists uh, this past week. And the media yawned. Other than Huffington Post, no one covered it. And Al Gore's own blog post couldn't even get up alarm. You know why? Because Antarctica has been gaining ice. The bulk of Antarctica has been cooling. So Al Gore could fail to even spin himself. His own blog posts were so dull on Antarctica and the media ignored him. So Al Gore is getting the ultimate. He's not getting praised. He's not even being attacked. He's being ignored. It's a shocking development just to begin with Al Gore. Beyond that, you mentioned in Germany, global warming, major global warming scientists are reversing themselves, becoming skeptical. The major German media, Der Spiegel and others, it's my headline at Climate Depot, they're covering this shockingly and showing the people they're calling them co2 lies the german media is waking up who would have ever see, thought you would see this day that it's happening 
I released a report uh, a few months ago down in, when I was in Durban at the UN conference, the A to Z climate reality report. And it's all coming true from A to Z. They're failing on all their predictions. And now we have the United Nations directly stating that, that the case for species extinction and sustainable development is more alarming than climate change. The United Nations recognizes they have a turkey on their hands and they're shifting now to, to species extinction. And that's why Rio now is gonna become front and center as it's gonna be the Earth Summit plus 20. Uh, and they're gonna be pushing all sorts of things. The big shocker out of that so far is a global EPA, and this idea came out of France, they claim it was 100 nations gonna support it, a global environmental organization that's gonna be able to police the world. Think of our, our own EPA with the, that, that speaks French. It's a very, if that doesn't spend chills up your spine, I don't know what will. Wow, and, and I also saw that even in the New York Times a few weeks ago, a whole bunch of top scientists sent letters saying global warming's overblown and a fraud, and they even published it. So clearly they are trying to kill this discredited fraud. Kind of like in the 70s, they said we'd all be frozen by 2000 and you know give the Club of Rome money and shut off development. Really, it's about the monopoly men, the eugenicists having control of society, but it's the same UN fraudsters that everybody knows is attached to this, just because they roll out a bunch of bull about species extinction when they're finding hundreds of new species every month, I was just reading the other day. I mean, that fear-mongering isn't going to sell. Uh, so can you speak to that? But then I want to expand into the fact that, well, okay, they're, they're exposed, but they're not going away. They're just sitting there still ruling us. Yes. In fact, you know, before my species, you mentioned global cooling. It's the same solutions regardless of the environmental problem. When they were talking about global cooling in the 1970s, you could actually pull out direct quotes about how we need more power and control. Scientists need to geoengineer the climate. They were talking about pouring black soot on the ice cap so that it wouldn't grow. Uh, they were talking about how tipping points, we must act now before it's too late to prevent man-made global cooling. So, and then they shifted there over into De deforestation, the save the Amazon, the tropical rainforest scare, that was huge for decades. And they propagandized kids with that as well. And then that fades away. Then they bring up global warming. Before that, we had overpopulation back in the late 60s and the 1970s. And as we mentioned, John Lennon, the ex-Beatle, uh, actually is the one who ridiculed uh, Dick Cavett on his TV show and, and made a chump out of Obama's science advisor, John Holdren, and said overpopulation was overblown. So if you go back, every eco scare is designed for regulation and control. It doesn't matter what the actual science is behind it. Right now, species extinction is going to be one of the biggest things everyone hears about between now and June at this next UN conference. And they are coming out with all sorts of wacky claims. They'll claim that 50,000 species are going extinct every year. When in reality, they can't even name the species. They're actually uh, project. They're actually electrons in the hard drives of the of the computer models. They're potential species that may exist, but they haven't actually discovered them yet, and they may be going extinct. So species we don't even know about theoretically might be going extinct, and they've turned this into a species holocaust. And I have scientists, including the founder, co-founder of Greenpeace, Patrick Moore, who's done guest columns at Climate Depot, just tearing apart all these new species claims and they have a panel like the united united nations climate panel an ipcc like panel devoted to species and what they've found is they have just as many errors there's just as much politics there's just as much fraud involved in that as well so be ready for the species the species brigade from the united nations to be pouring it on in the media in the next few months so that's their new attack which is an old one here in austin with save our springs they took tens of thousands of acres from ranchers and farmers, adverse possession, a few cents on the dollar, and then the very environmental groups turned around and built hotels and million dollar ranchettes and sold it. Uh, and they said it was for a golden cheek warbler bird that's just all over the place. They've yeah, been caught it, planting different groups, as you know, cave bugs in areas to shut them down, planting kangaroo rats. They've been caught uh, planting uh, 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 different species, what the EPA got caught planting birds in Colorado, remember that? I mean, they're constantly getting caught, and really they're just mafias. These aren't even well-meaning environmentalists. I mean, yeah, Mark, from the, your research, aren't these just no, uh, criminal yeah, this, land grabbers? Yeah, and this is, it's all about bureaucratic bean counters, and it's about people with other agendas behind the scene. In the 1990s, I covered the alleged endangered desert tortoise on a mining operation in the Mojave Desert. It's actually uh, a rare earth mineral, lanthanides, that uh, that we need for catalytic converters and other things. And this is something, 
uh, that they actually claim that the desert tortoise was endangered. Well, we looked it up. I had a, a biologist there. We studied it on the scene in the Mojave Desert. It turns out the endangered tortoise, the, I'm sorry, the desert tortoise was not endangered species, but around the edges of its habitat, it literally, uh, where all species have less of them, they declare the edges of their natural habitat an endangered area. So it was regionally endangered. In other words, the species itself was doing fine, but because the mine was in an area that was at the edge of the habitat of the uh, desert tortoise, they declared it an endangered species. So you can do that with any animal. Well, even let me the most stop right there. Animal. Let's take polar bears. Anybody can look this up. But depending on the number, they've increased three to five times. The Russians say five yeah. times. Canada says four times. U.S. says three and a half times, as you know. This is all on record. Al Gore thinks we're so dumb, he shows animations of a baby polar bear that can't swim and is going to drown. This is how dumb. And then... The numbers have exploded all over Canada. They're robbing people's trash, killing people, killing family dogs. They're running around like roaches, bald eagles in some areas. I saw one just the other day. There's bald eagles all over the place. They're telling you there's no bald eagles. Let us take your property. I mean, it's, it's so transparent. Now, now, they've gone through these frauds over and over again. Is it ever going to come to an end? Is there any way to route them? Take Austin, Texas. I mean, it is a criminal cabal who rules and, and steals whatever they want and says, we're charging you more, it's for the earth. I mean, how do I stop them? Well, here's, I mean, here's the bottom line. It's, it's, it's going to continue because we allow it to continue. If you look at the presidential debates these years, the presidential candidates, I don't know of any candidates calling for full withdrawal from the United Nations for this kind of utter nonsense. There's not a single candidate that's called for the withdrawal of the United Nations climate process. In fact, we can expect a President Romney to accelerate it. Uh, you know, a President Obama hasn't even, probably you could argue, has done less than George Bush did. George Bush was committed to this. The first George Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush, got us into this whole mess of the Earth Summit. So whenever you give people like the United Nations legitimacy, funding, home and intellectual support like the, like the like Republican and Democrat administrations do, you are spawning this nonsense to go decades into the future. Until someone stands up to the green lobby and makes things change, it's going to continue. And sadly, I don't see that on the horizon. They have cast themselves as our saviors. They have sold uh, everybody on this idea that they're the good guys, if we don't agree with them and give them all our money, we're the bad guys, we're bad to have kids, uh, they teach that in the news, uh, depression's good because it cuts our carbon footprint, uh, don't use oil because it's running out, and all the studies show they're finding more, but here's Bloomberg, it just seems on every front, people are turning against them, reality is turning against them. Peak oil scare fades a shale, deep water wells gush crude, and now they're finding old wells all over the world are refilling and more scientists are saying, you know what? This stuff is not coming from dinosaur blood or dinosaur oil. This is coming somewhere else. Wells are refilling. How does that fit into their scaremongering? On every front they're being reversed. It does, yeah, this, we're facing now energy, actual energy independence. We're gonna be a net energy exporter of natural gas and by 2016. Technology and free markets and allowing people the, the idea and, and, and allowing stuff. And the reason natural gas has exploded is because mostly they were state and local regulations. Had the federal government been heavily involved in that, this whole thing would have been squashed early on. Thank God President Obama hasn't been able to get his hands on this kind of development because his own science advisor, John Holdren's on record as saying one of the hazards of a free society is cheap energy, abundant energy. This is their enemy. And we are actually now through technology going to be proving all of the greens wrong and making a mockery of them. Well, well said. I mean, it, this is such a diabolical plan and, and they admit it's about a power grab. They admit it's about a global government and you're going to be on the radio uh, tomorrow breaking more of this down with us. Uh, Mark Moreno, Climate Depot, thank you so much uh, 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 for joining us, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, I mean, he's totally vindicated. We're vindicated. Uh, I mean, it, this is just such a ridiculous takeover that we're dealing with here. I mean, here's an example out of Scientific American. We'll show you a document cam shot of that. Lake Vostok is almost breached for 20 million years, reportedly drilled by the Russians. And they say in the next 24 hours or so that they're going to break through uh, into this. And uh, here's the Scientific American article on it. And the media is freaking out over it, saying 
they shouldn't be allowed to drill in because this is 20 million year old organisms down in there. I'll guarantee you stuff's gotten down in there. And how dare you contaminate it? It's just this idea that humans can't go anywhere, humans can't do anything, but we can have 40-year-old nuclear reactors melting down and blowing up everywhere, that's fine, or create GMO that infects the entire biosphere with d totally different species. That's fine when the globalists do it, but don't you dare a scientist drill in uh, to find out what's in this lake. Amazing story. We'll cover it more tomorrow. Another uh, incredible story. Uh, with a straight face, the Washington Post reports that they're charging people whose five-year-old daughter um, has been late to class, so they're going to criminally charge him. We talked to the lawyer dad today. He goes, the code doesn't even say this is illegal. I don't know how they've charged me, because they're just crazy crooks. And these courts are just lawless sinners of pure evil. A uh, great article uh, here out of Alt-Market. The DHS defends globalism, not America. Absolutely, they defend the globalist. Um, also, uh, there's new reports here. Now, if you speak out against U.S. drone strikes, uh, you are a terrorist sympathizer. That's what the uh, corporate media uh, is reporting and saying. That's just some of the reports we've got here today. Uh, another one, FBI paying cash for a cup of coffee, a potential indicator of terrorist activity. Now, if you pay for a $2 cup of coffee or a dollar bottle of water, cash is evil. It's... Everything's got to be tracked and traced by the globalists so they can add fines and fees on it or turn off your uh, digital uh, system if you're not a good uh, globalist. And I've, I, of course, have issued a worldwide alert uh, that I just see all the preconditioning and propaganda going on that I saw right before 9-11, now blaming domestic groups. Uh, Reuters has a report where they're saying, you know, domestic groups are the biggest threat uh, and that, you know, libertarians are basically terrorists. Here's that. Uh, Reuters report, people that think the government's too big, people that think the UN is taking over our country, which it publicly admits it is, with the Agenda 21, we're bad, we're terrorists, we're evil. And uh, here's the report at Infowars.com. I hope everybody gets out to everyone they know. Infowars issues emergency terror alert. Threat of a false flag event has never been higher. Get this out to everybody, and it may back the globalist off. And we can also have another big effect. Um, people say, well, the Senate has passed a bill to where you can have uh, your local airport not run by TSA. You can just have private security. People say, well, they'll just continue um, groping and grabbing on us and all the rest of it with the new company. The point is, is that we'll then go after those groups. We're fighting back. This agency's being destroyed, and just renaming it isn't going to save them. Okay, we know what's going on. We know what's happening. We know it's a brown shirt meant to overthrow the Bill of Rights and Constitution. There's a lot of other news I didn't get to, but I know Rob Dew covered a lot of it earlier. The Ron Paul information is just amazing. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central. If you believe in this information, you're watching it out there on the web, subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. We've got a 15-day free trial running for everybody right now. And you can also, uh, we've expanded. We're calling it the uh, Give the Gift of Truth special uh, friendship love of liberty, love of humanity uh, in the month of February, 44% off on a yearly membership. We're extending that right now at prisonplanet.tv. Couldn't do it without you. Great job, the crew. We'll see you back tomorrow.